Hello, and welcome to The Naked Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Dr. Sean Wise, Professor of Entrepreneurship and Strategy at Ryerson University. We're here filming today at the Ted Rogers School of Management in the heart of downtown Toronto. Our guest today is menswear mogul, Harry Rosen. Harry Rosen is the founder and executive chairman of the Canadian luxury line, Harry Rosen Inc. Harry got the first taste of entrepreneurship by managing his father's junkyard in Callender, Ontario. But his start in retail began by washing windows and sweeping floors. This helped him to learn every aspect of the business from a very young age. According to Harry, one of the keys to his success is his passion for lifelong learning. Even at 82, he continues to take classes at Ryerson University, where he sets the bar for personal style in and out of the classroom. Harry Rosen Inc. was recently named one of Canada's top most admired cultures and 50 best managed companies seven years in a row. We're thrilled to welcome Harry Rosen to The Naked Entrepreneur today. Welcome back to The Naked Entrepreneur, my guest today, retail magnet and a personal hero of mine, Harry Rosen. Harry, thank you for, for joining us today. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Uh, for 60 years, you've seen competitors come and go, industries shrink and grow. Why do you think you've been able to be successful for so long? I think that I've kept my eyes open and uh, immersed myself in the activities of uh, younger people sufficient so that I understood how changes were evolving and how they impacted the industry. And I'd like to think that I uh, perceived what was coming and uh, incorporated our, our business in such a way that we addressed those issues. I find that uh, within our industry there are a great many people who have been successful but the graveyards of retailing are cluttered with all kinds of people who had successful businesses, somehow or other reached a level of comfort and did not recognize the change that ultimately eliminated them. So I think recognizing change is what I'm hearing you say. You know, our, our friends to the south think that Darwin's survival of the fittest is survival of the strongest, but we know better. We know that what Darwin was really saying was those who adapt survive, those who can be flexible. I want to go back in time to when I first came into the, the business world and casual Fridays emerged. If I was selling high-end beautiful suits, casual Fridays to me would be a demographic threat. Right. Yet you turned it on its head and embraced it and survived this sort of 1999, 2000 trend. And while it still exists today, Harry Rosen is stronger than ever. What do you attribute that to? Well, I attribute it to are realizing that this other lifestyle was developing and the importance of, uh, of variety in our selection so that uh, we were not obsolete where our customer was concerned. And uh, Casual Fridays, we welcomed it into, uh, saw it as opportunity and uh, developed the casual wear side of our business. I'd been watching the development of retail in the United States, in particular Ralph Lauren, who in his early years was showing interesting casual wear. And so I approached their organization and got an exclusive for Canada and introduced their product. And immediately it, it brought in the, the so-called uh, uh, casual wear dresser uh, and added excitement to our business. But uh, interestingly enough, over the years, even though the, shrink, the clothing business has shrunk, uh, Harry Rosen has managed to continue to grow and so that today we, uh, we have a dominant share of the better end of the men's tailored clothing business. But our business is extremely healthy in that we're 30% uh, uh, casual, 50% what we call tailored clothing, and the other 20% furnishings or haberdashery. A real good balance. Now, I've heard you talk about your success and, and what you feel got you there. And, and to me, I can put it in three categories, integrity, relationship building, and lifelong learning. Would you say that those are the pillars, and how did you come to them? Those are indeed the pillars. Uh, 
where integrity is concerned, I, uh, I guess I, uh, that goes back to my upbringing and I think my father uh, was a good example for me where integrity was concerned. But I was very fortunate that I found mentors in my life, considerably older than myself, who were outstanding citizens who had done terrific things apart from being successful in business. And I, um, I learned so much from them. Uh, and so um, I'm very proud of the reputation of Harry Rosen, uh, not only with uh, the public, but with our vendors. We have never taken shortcuts in that respect. And uh, we are indeed uh, uh, very moral in our outlook. Uh, the other two questions you asked, uh, if you'll repeat the, uh, the other two. Integrity, relationship yeah. building, and lifelong learning. Right. Relationship building is um, really something I feel very proud of. Uh, we're in fact uh, serving the fourth generation of some families. Uh, we, uh, uh, we always approached looking after our customers in a way that each one of them was individualistic, obviously encompassed by contemporary fashion. I mean, that you cannot avert, avoid that influence, but um, the uh, uh, the men that um, we served, we built relationships and trust with. Men are very different than women. The men don't like shopping. But uh, once you get their trust, great things happen. And um, through our cl satisfied clientele, which is still our best advertising, we've managed to uh, uh, be referred to many, many of their peers, and our reputation continued to grow. And hopefully we delivered on our promise. Uh, the third question was, uh, besar integrity lifelong was lifelong learning. Um, to this day, I, um, I, I really feel very gratified watching the um, contemporary scene, listening to the language that's used by young people, understanding the importance of technology, although I don't necessarily excel at it by any means, and um, uh, generally recognizing their lifestyle and how they, in time, when they leave the education fields they're in, uh, will become Harry Rosen prospects, customers-wise. So building a trusting relationship is uh, really what it's about. And it gives me such great pride, as it did yesterday, for an example, in my working at our Blur Street store, uh, when a customer came in and who is uh, 80, 84 and um, reminded me that he'd been buying clothing from us for almost 60 years. That's a great, it's gratifying been 60 thing. 60 years since that first Parliament Street storefront. Did this you ever dream that it would be this big when you first started out? I uh, must say I'm a limited dreamer. I, uh, my, my dreaming is, um, is confined to almost a year at a time. That's my time frames. Uh, when I get through the year and I look back and see some achievement, I set my goals on the next uh, site. I'm not a, a uh, great example for business schools. I uh, do not have. I'm not sure I would range. agree, but that's okay. <laughs> well, I do not have long-range plans. I um, initially, when I went into business, uh, it was to survive, and uh, as I survived each year and managed to make some progress, I uh, set my sights on the following year. Slightly more than one year, but that that was my general parameter. Now, you mentioned uh, a couple of points I want to follow up on. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about mentorship, both giving and receiving. But I want to go back to your dad and, and your first exposure to sort of the business world, uh, the junkyard in Calendar, Ontario. <laughs> so tell me that yeah. story and, and what you think all of these years later it still brings to you. What was the impact? <laughs> well, uh, my father had uh, bounced around from uh, in various different types of activities, but always attempting to be an entrepreneur. And nevertheless, uh, when the war broke out, he, had, he, en he uh, enlisted in the army and uh, was discharged not long afterwards with a, a, a condition called a mastoid, which they did some very crude operating on. And, uh, and, and so he was discharged with a veteran's priority to buy a used vehicle because new trucks were not being uh, produced at the time. And he moved our family to Calendar, Ontario, where the down quintuplets lived about a couple of hundred yards away. Prior and to your family, uh, they were the claim to fame of Calendar. <laughs> In any event, we, um, 
my father started a junkyard, and um, I was uh, 14, I guess, years of age at the time. And um, as he accumulated the various types of junk, I took it on myself to organize the junk. I put the engine blocks here and the pistons here and used washing machines here and horse hair and all kinds of things that uh, were recyclable. And um, uh, that's where I learned my merchandising. I was going to say, is that the first time you ever <laughs> set up aisles and, and got used to merchandising product? Right. Uh, I would beg my father to take me with him uh, uh, as they, uh, he and his a uh, fellow veteran who owned the business, uh, per, you know, uh, went up the country roads and called on farmers to buy whatever things they had to sell. And I uh, begged to, to knock on doors, and I did. Uh, they allowed me to, and I charmed the ladies and, uh, and got the rights to uh, uh, find all the things on the property that were recyclable. We get it all into one big heap, and then we were going to pay the farmer for what we had there, and he'd start to look at it and say, well, gee, that, that's something I need, and that's something I need. Start taking it all back. But in any event, um, I had some success doing it, so uh, I was an early entrepreneur. <laughs> Where do you think that entrepreneurial nature, that spark, originates for you? Uh, the easy uh, answer is genetics, uh, because I, uh, during the war years, I remember even collecting uh, newspapers to sell to the fish store who wrapped the, mm -hmm. their fish in it, uh, and baskets and bushels. And, uh, and I even went down the railway tracks and picked up bits of steel here and there and collected it up and sold it to a junkyard, enough to get uh, to buy three hot dogs and a bottle of kick. And um, uh, that was my, uh, uh, my reward. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that... Uh, to a large extent, it is genetic. I, I like to think that my father was an example for me, which he was. Uh, he was an entrepreneur. Unfortunately, he did not really succeed at what he wanted to do. Uh, I always say about my father that it, if it was raining silver dollars, he was out there with a pitchfork. He was in the right business. Uh, he, the junk business, people in the junk business uh, gravitated at a later stage to much bigger businesses and uh, and did extremely well, but my father, somehow or other, he just missed the opportunities. I hope I didn't. <laughs> well, tell me about that first opportunity to open that store on Parliament. I decided that after working part-time for a better menswear shop on Bloor Street and um, uh, being more or less a stockkeeper, I got an opportunity to sell, and I, uh, I, I really loved doing it, and so uh, they allowed me uh, and I, I, I achieved as a seller, even on a part-time basis. But um, I, um, I decided, that since I didn't have any really strong direction as to where my education would take me, that I like doing this. I really do. I love it. And I got immersed in looking at uh, menswear stores in the city and the statement that the owners were making and how they differed from one another in the merchandise assortment. And more and more I became intrigued along with success I was having in selling, I felt that this is my calling. This is what I want to do. Thanks for watching The Naked Entrepreneur. We'll be right back after this break. Helping young entrepreneurs build brighter futures is vital for all of Canada. They are the makers, builders, innovators, and visionaries. They are the entrepreneurs who are creating Canada's future. Our goal is to help them succeed. Join us. Welcome back to The Naked Entrepreneur, my guest, Canadian icon, Harry Rosen. You mentioned earlier on the role of mentors, and I want to get back to that topic. Tell me about your relationship with Stanley Marcus, of Neiman Marcus fame, and and, and how that evolved and influenced your career? Well, there were a number of people that <coughs> became my mentors and uh, were just wonderful people to take my problems to and, uh, and, and get their input and learn from. Stanley Marcus uh, came about as a result of him having a speaking engagement here in Toronto. 
uh, he had came up here and I had occasion to drive him to his hotel and we talked and a bit of a relationship ensued and the result was that when I went to um, Dallas, which I went to occasionally, um, we went out to dinner and uh, got to know him all the more and um, he had published a couple of books and was very highly regarded in this industry and uh, a man of great integrity by the way and the pearls of wisdom that uh, came out of that relationship uh, I treasured so much. Once people usually find that they're playing a useful role in someone's life uh, they will continue and uh, that relationship ensued. I had a son, still have a son, that lives in Calgary. He's uh, in medicine and uh, he uh, was going to do his fellowship and uh, he looked at Dallas and Houston. He wound up in Houston. Uh, but um, when he went to Dallas, I, uh, I asked Stanley Marcus to have dinner with him and he was having serious back problems at the time. Stanley, he, not your son. No, Stanley, yeah, my, yeah. my son. And the result was that uh, he went to dinner with my son and it was shortly after he deceased, but it was right up to the end he was still giving. But the people that were mentors in my life were considerably older than I was. Um, and uh, I didn't always agree what they had to say. In fact, uh, a man that was most influential in my life used to say, uh, you make it your business to, show, to, to prove me wrong. Um, this wasn't deliberate. I, I, he was a sounding board for me. Mm -hmm. But what I could always depend on uh, from these people was even more than a business lesson. It was a lesson on how to conduct your life, uh, how to act responsibly as a citizen, and um, uh, how to grow an organization uh, in, with uh, integrity and the ability to perpetuate itself. Uh, these people are still important to me. I have lunch this coming week with a 93-year-old scientist probably one of the most accomplished scientists in this country. And um, uh, I listen intently to what he has to say. Listening, by the way, is a great technique for getting people to tell you more about their background and experience. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, I mentor uh, where I am asked to uh, today um, for a while at the um, Rotman School at the University of Toronto. And, and I've uh, mentored uh, uh, where young people have come to me and asked about setting up an enterprise, uh, what I could tell them they should do and, uh, and, and advice of that nature and I enjoy doing it and it's great to see uh, uh, a few of them have gone out and, uh, and started a very, uh, very successful business. You talk about citizenship and integrity and I have to say I've had the opportunity to dine with you before and I'm always jealous, uh, envious of your humility. There are so many people in the business world today, we won't name them, uh, who, who like you are household names, but they don't carry themselves in the same way. Why do you think that is and why do you think you're so different? I don't know that I've always been this way in my life. Uh, I think there's a certain security that comes uh, with success. Uh, and so I... Uh, uh, I feel, uh, uh, I, I don't really have a sense that uh, what I've accomplished is, uh, is, is, no, is really worthy of, of, uh, uh, of necessarily uh, being observed. Um, and, and not only that, I'm the type of individual that uh, erases my previous history and achievement uh, year after year, if not more frequently, uh, going forward as though I'm starting all over again. This is uh, the way I get, I think, insights that um, are not uh, affected by uh, or inhibited by my experience and, and the comments, comments of others. And uh, I've always done that and I will continue to do it. Uh, even today at age 82, um, I erase what's occurred the last few months and I look at issues today with a new eye and uh, and this gives me I think new insights some are discarded through experience and some on the other hand uh, are worthwhile and um, this is not by the way the best outlook in an, within an organization where people like more stability and don't necessarily like the idea of, of your doing a 
360 degree turn um, every so often. Uh, but that's, that's the thought process and it works extremely well for me. Uh, it really means I observe newness uh, as it's occurring uh, by so not by taking over the other experiences you sort of open yourself up for this new experience yeah yeah it's a it it, it means uh, not basking in your past success to the point where you're inhibited by what's going on but that you can see it with fresh eyes and some people will argue this is not possible in an 82 year old they will argue and I, I have no counter arguments to give other than I continue to um, uh, deceive myself that this is what happens, that I, I look at things afresh. Um, I, I, if you asked me, am I a problem solver, I would say in my own way I am, and the reason that I'm a problem solver is that I can look at the things afresh and develop a whole different set of ideas, um, that some of which you synthesize with what's going on in your current life, and you progress uh, and have done uh, good things to renew your business. When you look back, all the awards and, 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 and the wonderful family and the grandkids, what do you think your legacy is? And by the way, I must respond and say that uh, all of that is a microcosm. Uh, it's, uh, it's history. Um, your question again is that... When you look back at, at all that you've accomplished, whether yes. it be the awards, the yes. family, yes. the huge contribution to philanthropy, the, the hospitals, the universities, what are you most proud of and hope that is your legacy? I, uh, I'm proud of all of it, um, in particular currently uh, with some time on my hands I've associated myself with four different uh, philanthropies, fundraising causes. And um, um, I do this uh, with the same sense of uh, entrepreneurship that I have in business. Um, uh, and I think that's why I do it effectively. I, um, I, I, I'm competing with myself in a manner of speaking, or maybe the antecedents, but um, I, um, I enjoy um, just giving back and, and seeing good, good things happening in the projects I'm involved with. Um, the, um, uh, I'm an eternal optimist where uh, humankind is concerned. And uh, I have a great belief in science, and that's been nurtured by someone like my 93-year-old friend who I'll be having lunch with this coming week. Um, I, I, I see the eradication of, of uh, diseases in the past the future is great. I won't live to see a good many of these advances, but um, I'm an eternal optimist where uh, life is concerned and uh, perpetuation of life and the quality of life and the idea that we all have uh, some role to play in this great universal scheme of things and you've got to give back. Uh, I've been very lucky. Uh, people have uh, supported me and, uh, and that Loyalty uh, is, uh, is beyond comprehension for me, uh, and I just continually hope that uh, I can play a useful role in having been a, a Canadian in this city for most of my life. Well, I know that you're playing a useful role here. Uh, I only have time for one more question. Over the 60 years that, that you've been in retail, uh, you've been interviewed dozens, if not hundreds of times. Is there a topic or a, a story that you wish you've had a chance to share that you haven't been asked about? What's the one thing you would like people to know that you've never gotten to say in an interview? <laughs> uh, well, the one thing that they probably, uh, I shouldn't be so open about is that... It's okay, it's the as naked a, entrepreneur. A well-dressed entrepreneur when you're here. As a father of uh, four children, I, uh, I'm fortunate to have a wife who uh, managed to instill the right qualities in our children, or at least direction anyway. And um, I, I feel each of them turned out uh, pretty good in their own right. Uh, but I wasn't necessarily the greatest father. Uh, Saturday is a uh, game day where retailing is concerned. Uh, I never golfed. Uh, I never played tennis. Uh, I devoted myself entirely to this 
great task of trying to comprehend the minds of the consumer and anticipate what they want. And I'm very fortunate that I have a wife that uh, never discouraged uh, this uh, drive on my part. Uh, and and I, I was a sufficient father to, uh, to say that things turned out right, but uh, I, I would say I, I could have been a better father, let's put it that way. But uh, on the other hand, I had the pleasures of uh, interacting with the consuming public and, uh, and learning a great deal about what they're about, even though they're constantly changing. So um, that's my confession today, anyway. Well, I absolve you of all your sins. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of time, but I, I, I have to thank you for filling one of my bucket lists, getting a chance to sit down with you and thank to you. talk. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harry Rosen. Helping young entrepreneurs build brighter futures is vital for all of Canada. Our goal is to help them succeed. Join us. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Naked Entrepreneur. Our guest today was legendary businessman, Harry Rosen. To view more episodes of The Naked Entrepreneur, head online to www.nakedentrepreneur.tv. I'm Dr. Sean Wise, thanks for watching.